Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, the archer, but in today I'm going to show you how to turn off a bubble machine. Now it's a bubble blast. <laughs> Just, welcome to the live show. I'm going to show you how you can paint this sweet, lovely scene of a little girl in a gorgeous bunch of hydrangea bushes. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He's going to help me show you how to construct this painting by doing a couple of things. The first thing is to track my random and crazy movements with one of our robotic cameras and then zoom in on what I'm doing so you can actually see what's going on because you have the best chance of being able to create this for yourself at home if you can see what I'm doing. The other thing that he's going to do is kind of try to keep an eye on the chat. And if you have questions, put them in all caps. The moderators will try to either answer them if they already know where that information is, but you might get your question answered live on the show. If you're here on the replay, feel like you can put those questions in the comments too. I tend to check my channel every single day. So uh, even though there's a lot going on here, I catch a lot more than you think. Yes, I miss a bunch, but I catch a lot because we check it every single day. So if you have a question, even two years from the time when this video was put up, go ahead and throw it down there. I might catch it and answer it. Does that make sense, John? It does. All right. Do you guys want to jump on in and talk about the materials that we're going to be using today in this awesome life? Do I ever? Do you ever? I, I do. do. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So I have my reference here, and this is the grid reference. You can find this in the description. You'll see a link that says TS and a blah, 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 bunch of numbers. If you click it, that actually takes you to our website and this exact video page. And on there is a traceable and this grid. And then hopefully after the show, a step-by-step, because -step, I'm going to try to photograph a step-by-step -step during this painting session. The grid is set up on two-inch increments because it's for an 11 by 14 surface. So you would make lines every two inches and then number them two to 12 over here and then the two to 10 down here. You end up with this weird one inch overlap, which we're not into. It's also nice to print out so you know what we're painting. So here you see my 11 by 14 surface and I'm gonna be doing a grid on there at the beginning. So I'm really gonna just put one wish up here in the corner where I know I don't have any detail. And that wish is going to be for anyone who's feeling like bullied or picked on, right? Mm -hmm. To like get support, right? And to be surrounded by compassion. Because that's really terrible to go through. And if you're going through that right now, you know, know that that person's behavior towards you isn't about you. It's really about them. Not that it can help in the minute as a person who was bullied in school. I get sometimes when it's going on, it does really feel like it's about you. But trust me, it's about something that's missing in them. And you are fabulous and wonderful. So just know that. I'm going to be putting the grid on here uh, when we start. Got a bunch of colors today. Do you? So many colors. Um, this is what I'm expecting to be using. I may drop one or two of these if I go and I'm like, oh, I'm getting the values and hues that I want and I'm not dissatisfied. But I'm starting out feeling like Burt Umber, Burt Sienna, Thalo Blue, Doxazine Purple. I might throw in some Ultramarine Blue, Carbon Black, Quinacrylate Magenta, for sure I'm going to use a bunch of that. Cad Yellow, Thalo Green, Light Blue Violet, and Medium Magenta. And then I've got Titanium White and a little Zinc White. Now, on these two, you could just as easily use any just bright magenta pink. What you want, this has got quite a lot of... Uh, blue in it and I really want something just a little brighter and you can see that they're just a little bit different so just I'm looking for a pop of pink you look in your in your art thing for pop of pink don't feel like you've got to have this exact color that's not how art works it's helpful if you want the exact result but it's not necessary and then light blue violet and what that really is is a much bluer softer violet which is going to be really nice on the hydrangeas and that's why I pulled those two out you could do these painting this painting without it you could I, I don't know why you would, but you could. <laughs> no, you, you might have very good reasons for doing so. So I don't want to be a judgy. I'm going to come along here and I'm using a tool called a T-square. And I'm going to mark every two inches. That's two, four, six, eight, and ten. Right? And then right here at the end at twelve. Right? And we're going to make little lines across as you do with your mm -hmm. T-squares. Um, you can find very inexpensive plastic ones. I have links, affiliate links in the description below, like the little Amazon affiliate links. Um, but you can also just shop these anywhere. Just You just don't want to spend, you know, like a lot of money on them. Sometimes you got to watch the stuff on Amazon because there can be price gouging. 
So make sure that the price you're being charged there um, is a reasonable price. Because that's a thing we have to look for now. And also tiny products. Isn't that it? When you order something from Amazon and you get something teeny tiny, <laughs> you're like, I did not know that this good deal chair was actually for a dollhouse. Chair is much less of a good deal now. Just problems that we have mm. in the world of us. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to mark out two inches again. It's going to leave me with this one inch here at the 10 inch mark overlap. I'll show you how you grid that out so it's not so much of a problem. And then it usually takes me to do my T square from two sides to really catch this. The thing that you need to know is that your one inch square is at the bottom. That would be the important thing. Now, I also have in the link, I have on the web page and I have on the link um, a gridding tool. If uh, you want to take the reference image and do your own grid, that's completely fine. I don't mind. I will not be offended. But if you do that, you can't write me with a bunch of questions about what went wrong there. Because <laughs> I didn't grid it. So I don't know. I, I wish I knew. If I knew, I would be the greatest art teacher in the world. Sean is laughing at me today. You doing okay today, babe? I'm doing okay. Your shoulder all right? It's it's hanging in there. Is it? <laughs> oh, no. Hanging in. John is being very brave. His shoulder is not feeling fantastic today, but he didn't want us to have to bump the live. And I think that's very kind. Well, the little. I, I know that I could fast forward this, and maybe in future ones I will, but sometimes it's nice to see how the grid goes in in and, real time. Yeah. I, you know, in future ones I may like speed these up, but. Pre grid it. And then like swap it. it out, and then be like, and this is what the gridded one looks like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, to do these new grids, I put numbers on all my little grid references so that you can. I found this has really helped me um, see where I am in complicated layers and shapes. Uh, I have some stuff going on sometimes with my learning that makes it important that I do that. But you'll see I come along here and I'm going to mark, not right there, it would be, this line would be f four, come on girl, six, <laughs> eight, and ten. So it goes four, six, eight, and ten. So how that works is row four, square four, do you have anything to draw there? And you go through and you can easier find where on your art map you are so you can draw that in easier. Now I'm going to start really only to sketch her in because I feel like she's the only object I really need to have pre-drawn. And so if I'm looking at her hat, right? Yeah. The hat kind of comes through here. And I'm going to draw the top of it. As you do, and I use the grid, I'm on square 12, right? Line two, I use the grid to just make marks where I'm at in that grid. I try not to take in the whole drawing. And that lets you draw if you are not quite ready to draw, but you'd like to be ready to draw. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hmm, You're I want to do some drawing in my art, but it seems overwhelming. Drawing pre-emergent? Drawing pre-emergent, pre-emergent drawing. <laughs> It'll help you catch some of the perspectives and things that might be giving you a little more grief. Yeah, nothing like a hat. <laughs> She'll be like, what? And you're like, yeah, I know. Hats be crazy. Little foreshortened ellipses of the hats. And then you can see, oh, well, like my brim would come out like that. How would you would not necessarily know that? And then you can duplicate that. So you can kind of see here, all I'm doing is I'm just going, what's in this square, right? What comes in here and it exits there. And it comes in here and it exits here. And it comes from here and it exits down here. That's how that works. It's about taking in smaller things. You know, um, I was watching a live earlier today. Because uh, I was just, actually I was checking the, there's this thing called the hashtag live channel that YouTube runs. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. It's actually a pretty good resource. And it tells you what's coming up in lives, what's been live, and what's going on live right now. And I've been helping my friend Stephanie Bergeron of Deliberately Creative. I'm trying to help her get into the hashtag channel. And so I was in there checking it, and I saw live. And, you know, I was listening to another YouTuber who's going through quite a lot right now. And I, of course, feel tons of sympathy. John and I feel tons of sympathy because this is the best job in the world, the hardest job in the world. Look at that oh, yeah. gorgeous hat. And what I would say is, is sometimes 
you get this like this overwhelming bunch of stuff in front of you in life. You have an overwhelming drawing on the canvas. You have an overwhelming bunch of stuff in front of you at life. And uh, John and I certainly have that going on right now. Uh-huh. And there are so many challenges. Sometimes those challenges are people. Sometimes they're work challenges. Sometimes they're pop- like whatever it is in your life, right? If you look at the totality, John and I were talking about this this morning. If you look at the totality, well, that's like a big tidal wave coming at you and you just can't do anything about it. But if you break it down, like you learn to do in your paintings, if you can break your life down into smaller bits, like you learn to do in your paintings, sometimes things that seem really overwhelming can start to piece together a little bit easier. Mm. So that was my thought for today. I know I'm kind of waxing philosophically. Let's draw a shoulder. Philosophically. I was a little philosophical this That's morning. Okay. Paint bring... is powered by philosophy. Uh, it can be. <laughs> and I... Sometimes it's just a banana taped wall. But dude, that's like, you know, not only was that an amazing comment on modern, you know, modern art, but it turned into a performance movement that brought about conversation and made that artist just resonate as a contemporary artist. What I would say for me personally, I felt the responses from my community were some of the most valid performance artists. You know, oh my you gosh, guys yes, were amazing. Like, and that's, I mean... From the standpoint that it began that conversation, I feel like it's very valid. It really did. And I can't, I, you know, I started that going, oh, gosh, because I'm familiar with that <laughs> artist. And I'm like, what are you up to now, little dude? What's going on? But I have to say the end result being the, you know, the metric, he might have done what he was supposed to do. You know what? There was a dude who once looked at a urinal, posted on a wall, and said, seriously? You mean Duchamp? Well, everybody who looked at his work <laughs> oh. <laughs> and was like... Don't be throwing no shade at the Dottas. The Dottas were like no. really good artists. <laughs> but I'm just saying, for real. Like, they Beatrice were... Woods is like my, my, my role model. I like her and Frida Kahlo kind of like all wrapped up. Yeah. I want to be a tough chick. So I can see where my hand and arm are going. And now you can see what I'm talking about. You know how I'm always saying your elbow is around your waist? You can even see it in this photograph. Yep. And that is the important thing is how the grid lets you break a complicated subject down a little bit easier and makes it something you can you know, take on. And so sometimes I think we need to grid our lives. Grid your life. Yo. <laughs> you know, there's so many useful metaphors um, for finding your way. Isn't there? Even I that. love this hand. There's so little going on with it because I get to put a big giant hydrangea on it. So I really only got to <laughs> and, do that. <laughs> uh, speaking of bananas taped to a wall, uh-huh. our lovely patron Patty just supported us here in Super Chat. Thank oh you. Oh my gosh, Patty. Wait, check it out. We got look, new bottles. Look, look. Patty, she, got anything. We refilled. Look, look, look. Uh, okay, well, it's slow. That bubbles. was way too long, right? Was, for the excitement <laughs> that I had built up there. <laughs> What? But, I gotta stop making crazy faces. Why? Because eventually, somebody besides Ian <laughs> Garland is gonna gift me in an unfortunate way. <laughs> right now, just my good friend Ian does it. He also like leaves pictures on my phone for me to like randomly find. Oh look, there's Twitch. So far, nothing that I've been scarred by. Just funny stuff. <laughs> that would make a funny movie. Hmm. That line just spun out of my head. All right, I'm going to take my reference aside because you can see I got a lot of squares I didn't need. (laughs) But this sort of lets you understand how that um, happens. Now, I'm going to be painting in this background. So I'm going to grab a big brush. If you want to know what this is, this is a Silverstone number 12. And I always have had one. I've had one before I ever did business with a silver brush. Mm. And I will always have one. I can confirm there are. Many of these brushes that were here before. This is my oldest one, though. This is really old. Like, yes, it's cracked, but it's been through a lot. And I have left it in a paint jar, like, more than once. <laughs> I w- you know, don't do that. It ruins your brushes. I was just, I don't remember who she was, but I was, I was um, Facebook conversating. You Facebook conversated? You well, never get on Facebook and converse. I was up in the wee hours of the morning, and it was before coffee, so... <laughs> Anyway. Don't even talk to me about life before coffee. 
So there is no life before coffee. Katie Lyons knows what I mean. There's no life before coffee. I'm fine. But she was saying that uh, she was enjoying one of the comments that I had made in there saying it the brush you best brush is the brush you use. Yes, best brush. And this just sort of reinforces that that like the brush that you're comfortable with, the brush that you like is the best brush. The, and, and you and you got to get to know it. And it's emotional as much as, you know, like, I, I, what did I say? Are you happy with the result the brush gives you? Yes. If that's, if you're happy, then you're happy. Right? Yes. I was just thinking, and that's wonderful. But if you're in my Facebook group and it's a whole nother brush, maybe not market hard. <laughs> right, yeah, so, Stop you know getting what? me in trouble. And that's true. You know, <laughs> guys, the, if, and <laughs> my brush is in my group. I have partners. And I'm also going to say, you know, that's don't, don't do that to somebody else. It's like, just, you know, that's not cool. <laughs> that's been my theme this month. It's like, dude, <sighs> life, partners, online life yo. is like the best life anyway. and the hardest life. But we will tell you. The brush you use, just use it. Just the brush you use, just use it. And honestly, like, um, there's a, another YouTuber, uh, Bob Burridge. I think he goes by Bob Blast. And I really like him. I think he's a really gorgeous painter. I don't know him as a person. No. So I'm not, I, I've never met him. I just like the artwork. And I'm learning to say that. And I'm learning to separate it. I used to think that if I love the artwork, I would love the person. But apparently that's not a true thing universally. It's often mm. true, though. But I do love his artwork. Like, straight up mad respect. And he paints with a... He got all excited about Monet and he just taped a bunch of crazy whacked up brushes together and he paints from like six foot back from the canvas with this crazy stick. And my point to that is he makes beautiful art with that wackadoo instrument. <laughs> you can do anything. And he is a fabulous painter, like straight up. And we use some of the same materials. I just want to say we have some of the same processes and some of the same materials. So, boosh, boosh, boosh. Um, <laughs> we are as cool as everyone else who uses the same materials. <laughs> Let's start out with a little phthalo green and burnt umber because I want to begin this uh, process maybe with some dark values for these bushes to be built up on. You know, almost every car and camera company in the world gets by on that. What? You get to be as cool as the same people who use this stuff. Is that is that how it works with cars? Well, I guess it kind of, like... I, like, seriously, a lot of the car ads don't appeal to me because if any of that stuff happened to me in my car, I would be upset, like... When they're like Denali and it's like all off roading in the mountains, I would be like, I would be so mad. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be like, Woo, nature. I'd be like, what has happened with GPS? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing this Bert one. Bert Umber Green, guys. <laughs> We're just going to paint this whole hot mess. Very, like, look, crazy. 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 We're getting that first coat in there. And we're starting with green because there's a whole lot of green. It is a very. Green background. It is. And let's be honest, Bert Umber. Oh, this is still the number 12. I haven't even put. Just this is me never putting a brush down. Welcome to my channel. But here's the important thing you're saying. A couple important things you're saying. I'm not being neat and tidy, am I? Now, I know sometimes that feels like magic because you'll see this okay. hot, crazy mess. And then later it's this gorgeous pain. And you're like, what happened? Can I be honest? Huh? You're totally being neat and tidy. What? Like, there's no paint on the cameras. You're not spraying paint anywhere. Give me a minute. I mean, it's early like, in the show, babe. It's like it's early in the show on a Saturday. It's early days. I'm going to love this one. If you like this painting and you like the idea of this one and you want to know, can she actually paint it? I just met her. I also was on hashtag live and just got sucked into her show. If you're new, I've got um, a girl in blue bonnets, girls in lavenders, little boys fishing, kids in like there's a whole series that kind of based on that Holly Hobby trend when I was growing up. Um, you can check those out. They all match this. I continually, oh, there's a gorgeous little girl at night with a lantern. It's a series. Two little girls in beautiful dress at winter feeding a fox. It's a series, yo. Mm. Because we don't just do one here. When you guys like it, there's more. I don't know. I'm just messily painting around girlfriend here. This is why drawing on, uh, in a painting is so different than drawing with the pencils because this crazy layering mass will result in a stunning painting that is not as true with pencil work <laughs> just in case you didn't know mm. that's a much more meticulous tidy practice 
Tidy, tidy. Tidy, tidy, tidy. Do, 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 do. Oh. Turn my surface so I have an easier chance to get to it. Look at that. It's all green now. Mm. It's done. Let's hang it and sell it for $10,000. That would be cool. I probably could do it. <laughs> I'd have to build up a whole collection and then create an artist statement. I mean, it would take me like five years, but I could do it. I could make this a saleable painting and give it enough time. <laughs> I don't want to. So that's not happening. But I could. Could. And you can see what I'm just trying to do is get rid of the white. Quick there today. Huh? You're quick. Am I quick today? You're quick today. I feel slow today. I feel slow and chatty today. There'll be comments. There will. There'll be That's some. Okay. There'll be notes. <laughs> That's what we're here for. You would be. You're. Uh, I love how like people who don't like me still are respectful to the art. Like I recently had a comment, and I won't say everything that was said after that because it was kind of adult and not appropriate. But it started out with "ma'am." And then a bunch of crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and it was like, wow. I, I actually kept a screenshot of it because I was like, I love that it started with ma'am. Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of crazy stuff. And I get that too with my art. Like, your art's really beautiful, but I hate you. <laughs> but your art's really good. I'm like, oh, well, thank you for being respectful for the art. It's very rare I get any grief over the art. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes people come in and, and are very upset personally by my painting philosophy. And you know what I think of that, John? What's that? I worry for them. Why do you? Because life is hard. And if this upsets you that much, <laughs> I don't know how you're going to get through grocery shopping. How are you going to make it? How are you going to make it in life? How? I worry for you. I'm going to make it darker down here. Not everywhere, just down low. <laughs> I love the paint on canvas. I really do. It just, the sound of the brush going over the canvas and wiggling back and forth is so healing. It doesn't really even matter what's going on here. <laughs> it's the whole little process. Do you remember being a little kid and you're like, I'm coloring. I'm coloring. You're definitely, definitely feels good in that zone. It is that zone. John's zone for that is like working on cars. That's his zone, his coloring zone. I feel like uh, we have applied green paint to canvas. Yes. <laughs> this looks like that Brandon guy <laughs> when he's like messing up a Bob Ross video. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is this is going to turn into something. Is it? Yes. Right. I'm going to dry it though and make John talk to you about color shift. Okay. So, as she said, color shift. This is one of the few things that still plague us today. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is color shift? Color shift is a result of paint curing and shifting lighter or darker, and sometimes even to different hues. And that's generally caused uh, by accelerating the, the, the curing process using heat. So when you're using a hairdryer, don't use heat. Uh, it will cause this, those those paints to shift colors, especially student paints. Now, your pro paints, they don't have as much of a problem there. They're more resilient to these types of things. Color, their, your pro paints are more resilient to temperature, to the adhesion strength that they have, the amount of water they can take. And these are all the factors that make it to the, we use pro paints on the show. Mm -hmm. So just that pro paints are more resilient to things like color shift. And that's one of the reasons we use them on the show. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yippee, yippee, yippee. I'm putting out phthalo blue. I'm going to put out my colors now, which is really fun. It's a good time to take questions while I'm sticking out all these colors. And then when they're stuck out, when they're all out, I will tell you about them. You will? Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions while I'm sticking out colors? Because it's going to take forever. Let's see here. You know, uh, right now they're still celebrating the shifty color talk. Shifty color talk is We're, good talk. We've got a little bit of a delay, so, you know. Yeah, that's right. I forget about the delay. So I put John like on the spot. I'm like, what is All happening right now? And he's like, yeah. nothing, babe. <laughs> they don't even know what we just said. Give it 30 seconds. Then they'll think you're funny. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and 
I'm regularly feeling kind of put, like, what do I say? <laughs> Make your wife feel better. There's a thousand people here. Well, I, what I will say is that uh, every, <laughs> and they all it, love you. Patty, love you. <laughs> Patty's here, and she loves Hi, the shifty color talk. And we do have a group of people here. We've got almost 400 people here hanging out. Hi, hi, ho. And uh, the uh, oh, Joe has a question here. Uh, he was Joe. saying, do two inch grids work for 12 by 16 too? Yeah, you, so so here's where two inch grids work. If your image is not exceedingly complex, you can allow the grid to be larger. You can sometimes do a grid that's just four zones of a painting if it's very simplistic. I didn't need a lot on here because just the figure, and she's a simplistic figure. If you look at her form and shape, she's very simple lines. If it's a complicated image, and or like if you were doing a portrait in high realism and the face was like off, you want to do a half inch, one inch grid, all that. Mm. Uh, like whatever gives you lots and lots and lots of little zones to work in. If it's, you know, simple, two inches just fine. Mm. Does, that ex- does that answer it? I don't know. I think it does. I don't know. So the grid has to do with the resolution of the image that you're working I kind of want to stick some luminous opera out here because we painted with it yesterday and I was super excited about it. <laughs> well, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't have to. I just You're, really loved it yesterday. You know, I'll get it at the end. I'm putting on some zinc. I'll go over everything. Okay. It's your groove thing. Is it? Maybe. Might have to put out some yellow ochre. What am I doing? I don't know what you're doing. I don't either. It's This Saturday. is not my show. Is it not? It's so your show. Let me grab a couple things. It's your show. Is it your show? I'm a, I'm like, I, I'm a co-pilot. You're just a co-pilot. Like, I can... Definitely, I'm just a girl I can in the af- world. I can affect where the things go, but I can't affect the That's ultimate all outcome. That you're letting me be. I'm fine. I, I know. <laughs> Tubes of paint everywhere. They're just yeah, little sp- of paint everywhere. Everywhere, and I also have just in case some luminous opera because that's yeah. what we do now, right? I just was so happy with yesterday's paint result. I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. So let's talk about how we're going to break this down. Okay. How this is going to work is that you've got to figure out where your zones and regions are in your painting. You know, paintings have a, a background, a middle ground, and a foreground, right? Yeah. And, and the way we layer objects sort of puts those spaces into our mind through illusion. So this area here... Right, kind of all surrounding her is a background. And then we've kind of got a middle zone range. And she's really more, she's, she is layered kind of just in front of this middle ground. And then we have this foreground kind of happening here. But our focal point is here, obviously the girl. So to do this, I've got to put these layers in correctly. That way each piece kind of comes on top of each other. So it's like, if I'm going to put a puff ball in her hand, I got to paint the puff ball before I paint the hand. That way I can paint the hand layered over the top. If I want to put her in front of these other hydrangeas, I got to put her in front of these other hydrangeas. You see what I'm saying? You got to paint the furthest stuff back first. I got to do that. Now I got to find a brush. I'm going to use my cat's tongue. Sorry, I'm doing it. Cat's got your tongue. Cat's got my tongue. Going to use my cat's tongue. So this is a number eight cat's tongue. You could use a bright, you could use a filbert. You want something that's just going to give you a nice point. You can use round. I'm going to put a little blue, just a smidge of the blue into my green. Shockingly enough, some of my yellow to get these deep, far away little green zones. And I'm going to start to just touch the brush. If you think about it, I'm going to, I'll show you where I'm going to be. I'm going to make the little everything behind where this is going to be. I might grab some of my dark color and we're going to just mishmash in loose painterly brush strokes everything here. The reason is, is it's not in focus. It's not in detail. So being loose is my best bet. So I'm going to alternate between the bright color and the deep color through this background space. And it creates kind of like a distant texture. Finishing up the canvas, but you can see that the green underneath has worked out definitely, definitely in our favor. 
I can take this now that I've got, you know, my more detailed brush right up to her lines. And so when I paint those over, the layering of it will feel very authentic. And breathe out. Just painting on a Saturday with our friends, friends, friends. Paint on a Saturday with our friends, friends, friends. Painting on a Saturday with our friends, friends, friends. There we go. Up over that little area and down into the arm. And you can see I'm going to be putting a lot of the arm back, but. I'm pretty confident about where the arm goes. So it's not such a challenge for me. <laughs> if you, you know, struggle about where your arm is, you may want to go around it much more carefully. Going to add some yellow. And I don't mind if some brown picks up in there. Mm. So out I have phthalo blue, phthalo green, cad yellow, quinacridone magenta. I have this medium magenta. You could also use opera pink. Opera pink. I have the light blue violet, but really this is just like a very lavender color, doxazine purple, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, marsh black, titanium white, and zinc white. That's what's happening. I'm going to just get in here and take these brighter colors, oh, my zinc, and touch this space with some lighter values. Sometimes those letter values might even be a little more blue. What do you think of that? Mm. They're far away, and the colors are pretty. Just get a little more blue in there. Touching the space, and the colors are pretty. And the brush strokes are very random and loose. Very random and loose. And where we lighten the value, we don't want to do it too much because if we go too far with how we lighten the value, it'll pull too far forward into our foreground. So there's definitely a balance here that we're working out. But you can see those textures are quite pretty. Just pushing some brighter green into some of the areas where it might be. These are like little leaves that may be turned and catching some sunlight. It's good to rinse out on occasion. That's just some phthalo uh, blue with some zinc white into it. And it's going to be very cool. Very deep, very cool. It's going to be meaningful, man. Mm. Now, my two cents is dry it real quick because when we put the little distant puffs of flowers, we are for sure, for sure. Actually, let me, I'm going to come tuck around the hat a little neater, if y'all don't mind. It's absolutely. Go right ahead. I want to make sure that my hat layers quite well. There we go. Yeah, just making sure that those got... Nice tight. She's just giving a little extra overlap there. Now. So you just make sure you thoroughly dry. And that's another thing about using, about drying your surface. Uh, make sure that you thoroughly dry it between those layers. And whenever you start to dry, you have to be careful that if you don't fully cure and allow the paint to all the way dry through, that it can uh, it can get tacky and lift up. So you want to make sure you thoroughly cure it all the way through, so that you're not going to have any any lifting or anything weird like that. No weirdness. And just by thoroughly drying, you'll have a better shot of that. Does that seem about right? That seems exactly right. <sighs> exactly right, my dove. So these are great. I'm going to put a little bit of my diox into my magenta and maybe some of my zinc, but not my titanium. And I'm going to begin to talk about these 
cuffs that are here. And they're sort of a round shape. I don't know if y'all notice this, but the hydrangeas have kind of a round shape going on. Make some significantly bigger than others. Oh, you're just making some leafy shapes. Making some round shapes. We gotta give ourselves some round shapes. And I'm I'm making these values a little bit darker, maybe. This is because let's get this one maybe a little purple blue. So that we can build up what we're seeing over here. There's a whole like cascade of them really right here. Some of them will have to make brighter. But the thing about shading these puff balls is it's nice to start with a deep value. You can always lighten it up as you go. And on these, the details are not as big of a as big of a thing. Like I might even come right here and get a little of my medium magenta in my Quinn magenta and add some very distant pops there. See how that's looking. Get back from it a bit. I like it. We're starting to see it. It's starting to happen. Indeed. Indeed it does. It is a thing of beauty. So when you're working with Quinn Magenta, if you take a titch of your cad yellow and warm it, and then you can brighten it with your tinting white, you get the most extraordinary color. And on these, let's start to find their shapes. We'll leave the dark value at the base, but we're going to take these front ones and really magenta them up. Much like grapes, right? Notice I'm just, this brush stroke is sort of loose and very expressive. I have wanted to paint this painting for a long time, guys. Like straight up. Mm -hmm. like a long time. One there, this one here. So some of our hydrangeas are more of a blue purple and some are more of a magenta pink. So that's kind of fun. Sort of exciting in my mind. Lovely. Now I can come right into, let's get into the titanium white and you're going to see right away that its whole relationship to the paint is very different. It has a lot more tinting strength. I'm just tapping this up and down. These are distant little hydrangeas. They're just coming up, aren't they? I'm coming up. So you better get this party started. And it's okay sometimes when you have a color, you'll touch it to the background a few places just to imply maybe petals that are sticking. <laughs> Look, just boom. How strange has happened? Where they come from? I don't know. They just show up sometimes. And what's great is she's got kind of a big one right here at her hip. And that one actually starts with our lighter color. How fantastic is that? I'm going to rinse out and I'll work on my blue purple hydrangeas for a second. And we'll all ooh and ah because it's so fun. This is just fun. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you honestly, guys, this is just super fun. So I'm going to take my docks and my little light blue here that I have. The light blue violet. And I think I need just a little more doxazine purple. Just needs to be a little more purple than that. Just for this next layer. A 
a little light there early. Because we're just trying to create that next zone of highlight, just like we did with the pink. Drenching it up. Strangers, strangers, make me so happy. Strangers, strangers, make me so happy. They do actually make me super duper crazy happy. I can always pull out a little of my just phthalo blue and some of my tinting white. It leaves it quite um and dark. I'm going to come here through here and just put in a little of that blue. At the bottom of each little puff ball. And notice these are just little loose strokes. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but the brush strokes are looking kind of like this. See how I'm stroking? Mm -hmm. These are very little marks. They're not crazy, like, well-defined little marks. These are just little colors I want to make sure find their way into my puffers. Into my puffers. I'm going to pull a little of this out. I mean, this just is just powerful stuff. And I'll grab some of my tinting white where it's needed. Little docks so they all tie in. Breathing in, and I move my brush a lot. I could do this with a braid, I can do this with a round. It's really not important, the brush that I have in my hand, by any means. That's not what makes it work or not work. Sometimes with stuff like one stroke painting, yes, the brush that you have in your hand is a big deal. Because the brush creates the shape and the stroke and it's it's done in a very sort of constructed space. But when you're just painting, painting, and if anybody's doing acrylic April, this is something we really cover, you're just really just capturing light and shadow and form. And so the brush stroke is a means to an end. These hydrangeas? These are hydrangeas. Hyd huh. Hydrangeas. Little puffs of me. Not, they don't grow like this here where I'm at. <laughs> mm. These are pretty spectacular hydrangeas in my mind. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little of this pink here. That's just pure magenta. Look at that. They just come together, don't they? Mm -hmm. I'm so into it. Yeah, Stephanie was saying that these grow like crazy up there in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, yes. How are you doing, Stephanie? <laughs> oh, wait, is it Stephanie Barlow or Stephanie Bergeron? Bergeron. Hi, Bergeron. And I hope your live yesterday went really well. Barlow's here, too, I think. Hi, Barlow. You know, all the Stephanie, all the you know, Stephanie's from oh, all the Stephanie's from the Pacific Northwest. If you're a Stephanie from the Pacific Northwest, you are awesome. But if you're from the Northeast, we've just completely left you out. Yep, totally. Please feel free to write your hate mail now. <laughs> <laughs> Any Stephanie's in Florida, you have to watch yesterday's video. <laughs> Which was awesome. <laughs> that video was fantastic. All right. Look at that come in. How fun and easy and wonderful could that be? I can get a little of my titanium white into that pink. And these here, I'm going to just touch some little spots. It'll be heaviest at this upper edge, and there'll be little petals that come down. You can kind of tell I'm in a acrylic April mode now. <laughs> and it's already early. So early. So early. But see, that pulls those little bushes a bit more in our zone, don't they? Let me get a picture of that. And then if we've got any questions, Let's I'm going to mist my palette. Woo! If you're wondering what this is, is a micro mister. It just, it was sent to me 
But you get these on Amazon and they don't put a heavy water droplet on your paint and it'll keep it from drying out so fast. I see. And so I'll go ahead and take a quick look at this. Look down. This is pretty, this turned out really nice. This is just the back, that's just sort of the. That's just far away, out of focus nonsense. Far away, out of focus nonsense. Far away, out of focus nonsense. Everyone is saying how much they love and miss you. They think it's great being here. All the Stephanies and the non Stephanies, they were all mutually agreeing that. It's good to be here today. It's good to be here. Hey, can I just impose on you for that cup of coffee? Push the button. Is there a question? I. You, well, uh, you can get a cup of coffee for me? What do you do with all the paintings you make? Josh asks. Oh, God, Josh. I don't even know anymore. Um, if, I, if I ever put on YouTube every painting I've done since I've been on YouTube, I think it would, it would just break people's brains. Um, we're in the thousands, the multitude of thousands, and... When I used to be a person who, like, I painted it, I sold it. I painted it, I sold it. It needed to go. It needed to go live its life in the universe and do stuff. I had a whole feeling about this. I would just be like, paintings like orphans, and they need to go live in the world. And I said all these weird, arty things. Um, but when we started this, John was like, my husband was like, oh, you can't sell anything because, like, people might want to visit the collection, at which I burst out laughing. And so nobody's going to care if they ever see this collection of art. And he's like, no, I think they might. And... So we had a bunch of back and forth, but he was so emotional about it that I was like, fine, we're not going to sell any art. Let's see how that, so they're like tribbles now, and they're everywhere. There's two massive paintings just leaned up against my new studio walls over there. They're just everywhere. We just stripped off the last batch. Sometimes we sell the duplicates. So if I do a study, I didn't do a study before this show, but if I do a study before a show, and I've got two or three of them, Sometimes with the patrons, we do a what we call a de-stash sale where we put a bunch of art supplies and brushes and things and goodies and a painting together in this big like gift with purchase box. It's a girl makeup thing. I don't, I'm insane just in general, but in the best possible way. And I don't want to change. Um, but we put that all together and we just shipped off the last of those. So uh, it, Terry's Fox is going out and the winter scene is going out, and I'm pretty excited about that. But it's not common. We only do that four times a year. Um, we appreciate our community. We, I do try. I, I feel like I'm always talking to you guys about, like, there's an up, upcoming class, and there's up this, and up that, and up that. So we don't necessarily, oh, gosh, that's gorgeous. And too hot to drink, but gorgeous. Mmm, coffee is life. So they're everywhere. Long story short, patrons got to see some of them in the stacks, like just some. Yeah. And they were like, "Is that how you store your art?" And I'm like, "Don't do what I do. Do what I say." We, in all fairness, you have a dedicated, dedicated room that's air conditioning and special shelving, and we go I in didn't there. Even no fairness was a part of it. And we fluff. I'm the, gonna uh, take a little of my pink and blue and mix them together in a half step. And then I'm going to add some white to it. What do you think of that? Your collection gets quite cared for. Little gnomes go in there and check on it. I would like you to know it's cared for. <laughs> so now you know. And knowing is half the battle. Oh, I love those. Because they're like such like, don't run over people on the freeway. No, and just half the battle. I'm like, do people need this as an announcement? Is that the state of the world? <laughs> that was that was at the end of the G.I. Joe commercials <laughs> or the G.I. Joe cartoons. No, because they do the more you know. That was now. the more you know. That was different. Oh. See, right, and knowing thing. is half the battle was the G.I. Joe thing. Still same thing. Is this stuff people really need to know? <laughs> Really, really, don't eat broken glass. The more you know. Who's <laughs> <Like, laughs> eating broken glass? Where are they? Let's go find them. And help them out. Sometimes I just get really tripped out by the world. Boy, you've taken the public service announcement like in a totally different direction. Than you intended it to be? I'm going to take maybe some of this together and mix like a, maybe like a little bit of a. Well. Denise loves it and is being a wonderful supportive patron in here in chat. So thank you very much, Denise. <laughs> she finds us funny. She finds us very funny. <laughs> We're funny. She's We're funny. We're funny. 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 I'm going to give her some. I'm going to give her bubble. some bubbles if I can find the controller. I'm going to give her lots of bubbles. I'm going to give her all the bubbles. There it is. 
I have it under all the paint. Do you? I need it anyways. I wish that there was a fan. So we did get the studio rewired so that I could run AC mm. during it, but... <laughs> It was so noisy. We curtained it in because the studio that we built for me to be in, turns out there's some sort of, I don't know, there's requirements for space and cameras. And we built wrong. And then, so we added curtains that come out. And so I have a beautiful view of <laughs> okay, curtains. It's very hot in here. <laughs> I'm having Thank a you, personal Denise. soma. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Denise. <sighs> You just never know what you're going to get. You get me late at night. I, who knows what I'll talk about. Talk about Fran Drescher and Kegels. You get me in the morning. I'm like, wow. <laughs> We're fighting. Are you okay? I I am. I'm behind the curtain. <laughs> you're married to me. So you may be the least okay of anybody. Just saying, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre and oh I'm my gosh. add some of my black to it. Denise sent an additional message. What? She said, oops, forgot to write my message. Cinnamon, please never change. I love you guys. You're the very best the way you are. Can't change. I'm stuck this way. <laughs> so, like, thank you, Denise. My daughter like, is even like, mom. And I'm like, what? It's, this is what it is. Get a tool set to survive it. <laughs> this is going nowhere. <laughs> yes. Actually, my kids are very supportive of who I am and my individuality. I appreciate it. And I'm I, mixing yellow ochre. What? 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 No, keep you. I'm gonna talk next. Oh, okay. Tell them what you're doing. I am taking black and yellow ochre, and I'm mixing kind of a knocked back version of that. And I'm gonna come behind the hat, and I'm gonna make this little stroke here. This is my little shadow stroke, and then there's sort of another little one right here. That's nice. These are going to be the little shadows of the hat. Then I'll work that out. And I'm going to get some white into this. And sometimes I find I need to just tip it with a little bit of CAD. When you're trying to get that like dry straw look. When you're trying really hard to get your dry straw look. <laughs> just brushing that around. At first. Sometimes my hats get away from me. I won't even lie to you. I just get so excited about the curved stroke. It's really what happens to me. Mm. Get a little bit of the yellow into this mix. Around the front into the back of that. There we go. I'm gonna come around the back here like this. What fun is that? And then, oh, much lighter for the top. Now you're really swirling your brush. I am really just trying to capture the shape by swirling the brush. This is still a number eight cat's tie. But look, we got some hats going. Yeah. Hats are happening. Hats are happening. And I'm just trying to capture some of the value. But sometimes I get a little excited about the hat. It gets bigger. <laughs> the hat gets bigger, guys. It's what happens with me every time. But I really like that hat, so. It's a good hat. It's a good hat. The hat really kind of comes together in this beautiful little loose, wonderful, processy little way. You gotta love it. Now the skin is going to be a combo of yellow ochre and burnt sienna, and I'll go ahead and put some quin magenta into it to just rosy it up. And it's actually a lot darker than you would think coming off of her. Mm. Sometimes um, skin tones can be a real challenge. If you would like a, to know how to mix a different skin tone than what I'm demoing here, I have videos about that. Now, I'm going to wait until you get a little further. We've got, I've got a really good little thing to talk about here, but I'm going to mm -hmm. wait until you get a little further in the painting. Okay. Kimber, i got a little thing to talk about here for Kimberly, but you go. 
Oh, I'm just painting this all in right now. Oh, really? The underpainting of the skin, and then I got to tap in the green. So we've got a little bit of work. Okay. With Kimberly Hi, just Kimberly. came in. Kimberly Torres. Hi, Kimberly Torres. She came in and just gave us a really big supportive gift here in the in the Art Sherpa patronage. And I really appreciate it. And I wanted to say that all of you patrons out can there. Can I bubble? Absolutely. You can I got to let that dry anyways. I'm going to bubble and sip my coffee while John says thank you. And, and what I'll I'm going to say is you. you guys, you are what makes this possible. Your support um, allows people all over the world to get free art education. It helps all of these people. So you are literally the power that we, we, we get to do. To go out there and do this with you're so on our team you. you're our team man right and it, and that goes across all the ways that you guys support support us when you share with your friends mm -hmm. you're part of the team that makes sure people get free art education around the world when you patron you're part of the team and the thing to remember is like we started this so we could do this for free so people who couldn't necessarily afford an art instructor or didn't have access to art education could get it and the patrons they're the people that help us continue to do that. So they're really on your team too. Mm -hmm. They're they're all part of the team. And so when you see a share, when you see somebody patron, it's about helping make sure that anyone who wants this education, this art education has access to it. And the barrier isn't paying the instructor. Yeah. So thank you guys. We really do appreciate you. All of those patrons that help support us. You know, Very much. It's You're supporting each other too. You support each other. I love this painting. I'm honestly really just loving this painting. I, I I'm gonna take a little of my burnt sienna, my green. Yeah, you too. Yeah. I'm just making sure that the background is. You know, as lined up to the figure as we can have it be. It's important stuff. The skin tones are always kind of a pain and they tend to, you know, be a little transparent. Really all you've got to do is get your bases in and then what will happen is that I'm going to take a little of this dark brown and put it on the floor of her arm down by where the elbow is and then deepen at the elbow. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Darkening the elbow and then pulling a shadow up the arm. And then I'll take a little of my black over here. I think what's hard sometimes in skin tones is even getting the shadows and the values because it's like the whites of the eyes are very rarely actually in any way white. Mm. Like in any way. So sometimes it can be really hard. I'm going to put out my ultramarine. Everything about this dress was about the ultramarine. Is it? Yeah, it just sort of rotates, but that's not even open. Look at <gasps> this. You get, let's open it together. Fresh sealed paint. Are you ready? Mm hmm. Your paint is so fresh. So clean and so fresh. Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some white into it. And you'll see that makes a very nice, not quite this, but it's close, isn't it? Mm hmm. That's a quality ultramarine is what that is. All ultramarine is not equal. Now, if you're just starting out, mm. is there a particular brand, Josh would like to know, of paint that you could start with? There are brands of paint. I would say there are several companies that are great that you could invest your money in, and then there are some companies to avoid. I won't be ugly and say those on air, but um, what I would say is you can buy, these Artist Loft Level 3s are amazing. I've been using them for a while. Did not expect to like them, was not paid to like them, just do like them. Golden Artist Colors, always reliable. 
they're just a little thicker than sometimes new artists are comfortable with and they're really pigment loaded so there's just some getting used to that there is senlier and holbeins let's see i think i have both here there is senlier acrylic and there is holbein and senlier makes an abstract acrylic that's pretty fantastic for student grade paint it's still a little less pigmented. Um, you may end up, you know, wanting to upgrade slowly, but it's pretty terrific. And the other surprise brand that everybody always forgets is the M. Graham Acrylics. Terrific. And, and I don't have any here, Matisse Derivant. So write any of those down and here's what you do. During different times of the year, these things are all on crazy sales. Buy your good paint on a deep sale. Mm. So, you know. You're not paying list. Don't pay list. Nobody expects that. <laughs> it's like so funny. Nobody expects you to pay list. No, but don't pay list. Um, and what I, the reason I like these companies is they make reliable products. And if there's ever a problem, even if it was on the retailer's end, very often they will still back their product. And that can be hard to find. So, yeah. and, and, and they very rarely have a problem as a, as a company too. I'm putting a slightly darker value right now. What I'm looking for is like, where are my deeper values? Where are my highlights? And I'm just getting this, what we call kind of an underpainting. It's making sure that the paint underneath is solid and covering the canvas. And sometimes I've got to, you know. And you're rotating that surface around a lot. I do that so that I don't rotate my body. If you, if you move yourself instead of the canvas, you will get injured. If you're sitting, please remember to stand every 30 minutes or so. Mm. You get the circulations. You got to get those circulation going. You've got to move those legs. You just got to stand if you're if you're painting from a sitting position. There you go, and then I'll put a little. I'll start a bit of a thought of a ruffle there, right? And it comes around the front, and I'll put the arm back in and just starting that little ruffle thought. Gonna ruffle some shoulders. Gonna ruffle some shoulders. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna get my number four round out now. And I think if I dry this, my next layers of skin tones will come together very, very quickly. Okay. And so I'm going to say yes, thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. This is like literally Cinnamon and I's pleasure to be here and doing this with you guys, to be able to hang out and have all of this. I mean, like it's kind of a magic thing all of us coming together to paint and be together about this it's kind of nice so i'm mixing quinacridone magenta yellow ochre and burnt sienna that's going to be my base skin tone like it down if i've got a shadow i can use either black or interestingly enough look ultramarine blue does a pretty good job of creating a shadow skin value you mix it in there and then you're like oh that's pretty good yes. So under the ruffle in the shoulder, and probably, you know, through the elbow, I'm trying to create these this sense of where the light is. Where is the light, right? Where's the light? I don't know. Ask Carol Ann. She can find it. I knew that was coming. Thank you. I really needed that too. I'm going to put a very dark value here where the elbow might be bending. And I'm also going to put a very dark value here. And along where the arm is. And then right maybe here in the middle of the hand where I know I'm going to be putting a thumb. Mm. I know I'm doing it, so I might as well enjoy it. Go back into these two. Yep. And you just sort of get them mixed in and then I like to just lighten them up and darken them as I can. 
This I will put a lot more yellow ochre in, and I'll use the tinting white, the zinc, to lighten it. I'm going to come the front of the arm and the top of where the thumb is. Ooh, there's a question. Mm. Diana was asking. Maybe a little bit off the back here. Why do some of my paintings dry completely and then there are some with white specks? I did not do the coverage correctly or something? Um, so what it is is that the coating that they provided for you on your surface um, the acrylic paint was having trouble to adhere to. Now, it, it can be that you've added a lot of water to your paint and there's no binding. It can also be that there's like almost like there was, I think, an anti-mold coating at one point. That's my theory. I have no confirmation from the industry. But my theory was is that they were putting an anti-mold coating on some of the canvases that they were shipping in from overseas and it wasn't taking um, paint well. The basic trick to that is if you've got canvases and you've already invested and they're doing that to you, take them out. Don't even gesso them. Gesso doesn't improve blending. Gesso gives you tooth on a surface and an even place to paint from. It preps your surface for some types of painting. But if you're looking for better blending or paint just flowing over the canvas, that's not what gesso does. Um, what you want to do is just take white paint, white acrylic paint, and paint the canvas white a couple times first. And it will start to fix the binding of the canvas. Gotcha. Just give it a little yeah. nice coat, a little light coat first. Put that there and maybe a little bit of that there. Little dot on the. Hmm. Now, are. Uh, Just Aria? continuing to shape this arm. Aria? I feel like the arm needs to come a little back more into this space. I'm just working on the shaping of that zone anyways. And then I'll get back into these lighter values. Arya was asking, I'm guessing that's Arya. Is, uh, is this going to be a two-parter? Nope. Nope. You're getting the full hydrangea today. You're getting the full hydrangea today. You could break it up into a two-parter if you're tired. <laughs> yes, there is. A... And you would like to break it up into a two-parter. None of us are going to come into your studio and say, hey, <laughs> you're not allowed to do that. Josh asked a good question. It, when buying uh, canvases, are there any that you should avoid? I was thinking any place you can't return them. Yeah. Any place you can't return them. Uh, because I've had companies, they get they order from different, if they order from a new supplier, right? You, like, totally trust them. Um, and then they get from a new supplier, and then they're crazy. Um, basically, people will talk. Like, if you're in my Facebook group, I let people talk about, maybe not, like, selling out somebody else's brushes, but I let them talk about the different things they bought at the art store. <laughs> sure, yeah. And say, hey, I had this so good experience. I had this negative experience. Here's what I'm doing. I, I kind of let everybody talk because... Even region by region, you can be really impacted. You know, I mean, there's some companies you know are always going to be good. Ampersand, always going to be good, right? Um, I paint the artist loft every day, and I haven't had the uh, fight back canvas scenario in a while. Yeah. But I've had it there before, but not in a while. Um, Frederick's is pretty good. Um, oh, gosh, there's a, there's a couple. There's Masterpiece is pretty good. Uh, Savile Fair has a bunch of canvases that are pretty good. There's different places that do carry good product, and you really just kind of got to watch for that, and people will give feedback. And They really will. They'll tell you. I'm going to add a little white and yellow together for the sunlight reflection on her arm. If I had, if I had to say something as the, like a supplier purchaser um, for our studio, mm -hmm. more than by brand by brand recommendation, I would recommend going to a good quality supplier where you know that you're getting not knockoff product and yeah. you can return it if you have a problem. So that's why you know, a good supply partner, whether it's a there retail or online, those are important. Very important. Now that little highlight you just put on there just really rounded that arm out. It's like, a, it's like an arm now. Yeah, you just went, I mean, like you just sort of went from, now you picked up some black, black there. I'm going to come along here and just make sure that we've got that. 
Just and I may little... even just very gently kind of do a little line here. When we back up, you'll sort of see how that helps. Then we're going to oh, yeah, come no, it's, you can really... through right here. And let's give ourselves a little black bow. There we go. Got one of those. Now, yeah, she's got a nice little tidy bow at the side. But uh, I'm a ribbon person, so probably I will ribbon her. Because that's what I like. <laughs> that's really just about what I like. Just about what I like. Let me get some light color here. And it's okay that it's got a little pink. Like some of these I'll actually have a little pink in as I do the two, as I do different highlights. And I'm going to outline this part of the ruffle. As you can see, kind of creating that little space. And then I'm going to add a little highlight there. And a few highlights right there. And then right here, I'm adding these highlights to start to wrinkle the shirt. Let's wrinkle the shirt. Wrinkle the shirt. It's okay if we get a little yellow into it and warm it up for this side. And then right here. And I'll leave a little bit of the blue. And I'm going to add that very warm highlight to that shoulder. See how that's going in? Mm -hmm. We're catching these pops of sunlight is what we're trying to do. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Is everybody holding up okay? Are you guys okay with this being a one-parter? Oh, they're very happy with this. Is gonna, oh. <laughs> they, were, they were all very, they were celebrating that this gets to be a longer, more yes. Sherpa day. It is a longer, more Sherpa day. I'm going to get some of my blue into my white. And I am creating a lighter value, but it's cool, right, with the, with the blue. Yeah. Just letting the shirt kind of happen here. And you'll notice my brush strokes kind of move. They're very loose. They're very painterly. They move in a specific direction. I'll go ahead and get a lot more white right here. And let's put a little highlight. I'm going to grab a little white right here and it's going to come on the inside. Right there. See, we're just painting a little dress. Isn't it a little dress? Yeah. A little dress. Let's make sure that we've got a nice deep shadow. And I can even come in and kind of get the purple into this one to show that little bit of a waistband. The ultramarine and the blue mix very beautifully together, if you were not aware. Put a little bit of that right there. That's a deep shadow that we're going to be dealing with. And I may turn the skirt a bit because I want to talk about these. Little spots that happen along the skirt that that are the folds of the fabric. I'm gonna have to turn my reference too, so I don't get lost <laughs> in the turn. That's a we're gonna fold. We're gonna put an indent right there. You know, and then make sure that what's underneath the flowers is kind of darker. You, uh, are you a little mellow today? Am I mellow? I thought I was super energetic earlier. Well, I don't know. No? I'm trying to determine objectively. 
I thought I was like so energetic. I'm sorry. No, you seem really good. I'm not not there's not color commentary on that. I'm just like someone was asking if your mic was low and I'm like trying to No, I think I'm just in an area in the painting I'm thinking hard. <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. I was like that's why I was kinda like going, No, I don't think your energy's low today. No, like it was like crazy earlier, but that was when we were just doing those loose loose, loose little leaps. Now I'm be like, Oh, where are these folds going and how am I gonna get to them? Because see I'm trying to create these like little expressive areas of pockets of dress. Yeah, uh, we're just on to introspective Sherpa. Uh, am I introspective? Well, when you get to certain, you're like, hmm, hmm. how shall I put this fold in? That's definitely. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of times I'm just trying to figure out like where I want to put the fold in somewhere. Do I want to, how I want to do that? And, you know. I'm not saying it's deep thoughts, but it's, uh, you do seem to have some introspection going on. Putting some pink back there, which I really like. Isn't that wonderful on her dress? Yeah. That pink reflection. Super important because it speaks to, I put a little bit right here and here. It speaks to how the flowers are um, reflected on her dress. Which I think is looking pretty darn good. If I do say so myself. And I did. So that's weird. Chat myself up. <laughs> <laughs> on your own. It's my show. What, what are you going to do? I mean, like, who else are you going to chat up? The painting? Well, one would hope so. I talk to my artwork. Everybody knows it. So I'm adding a little yellow to that white, and it just warms it up, and it pulls it forward, even though the value's also there. It's helping it look like there's some sunlight right on it. There's a really interesting new question. Oh, and my gosh. I love okay. interesting and new questions. So Adding a little bit of that bright highlight right there. This is one of those things where it's, there's a, it, <laughs> so when someone asks this question. Hmm, um, let me sip my coffee. Do you look use at my, the wet oh on, my gosh, I got to take another picture, don't I? Yeah. Do you use the wet on wet method with this painting? Uh, we do some all Um, Pretty much every acrylic artist does a lot of all primo because acrylic is so made for that. Um, and so, yeah, it's wet into wet painting and very often we will work a wet area and add more paint to it and allow some mixing to happen on the canvas and some sort of layered blending and to happen on the canvas. And then we kind of let it all dry and then dry brush and then back into all prima and then back into dry brushing and back into all prima. So it's like back and forth. And that's the joy of acrylic. Otherwise we would all just paint oils. Right. Right. Let me take and so here. when you're talking about doing that kind of painting, it's, it, it can be, you know, when you say, are you painting wet and wet? Well, that's a technique as well as a style sometimes. So it can be a complicated answer. All prima is always a technique. Yeah. And some people like think of it as a style, but it's always a technique. Yeah. And that's that's where they're Yeah. You know, the not, not to, I'm not trying to be bossy, I'm just saying No, it's just the, the that's why there's some confusion, especially as a new painter even i get confused and i've been here for a few years well i think so, we think of people like bob ross or the highwaymen and and we go oh well they were all prima painters forgetting that that was really set forth by the impressionist painters trying to deal with the fact that they had 20 minutes of sunlight in fact a bunch of us in the patronage were just talking about an artist they wanted me to do a, a replication of a, a rose lily lily rose or yeah i think it's carnation rose lily lily rose a, a crazy painting and they talk about like this guy's friends, all of the impressionists that you know, setting up his like 20 minutes of painting so he could paint Twilight because this guy was like, I must paint Twilight. <laughs> right. And of course, he's working on Prima because he's got seconds. Yep. Right. But the style, how he painted, was impressionism. Mm. The technique that he accomplished that for those paintings would have been all Prima. Huh. What was the guy's name who taught Bob? Uh, Bill Alexander. Bill Alexander. Actually, everything you see Bob do is from Bill Alexander. Well, yeah. I mean, like, I just, <laughs> uh, just couldn't no, remember hey, the guy's it's name. it's just history. I was just trying to remember, because he, I, I thought he was funny, too. I loved Bill, too. I thought they were both fantastic. Um, Bob actually left everything, left his family, left everything to go learn to paint with Bill and became a certified Bill Alexander instructor. And in that journey, met um, the lady who helped, uh, actually, she's still there helping run the Bob Ross uh, Trust and Estate. 
um, taught her and she got through a very challenging part of her life um, through that. And then they decided to take Bob out and turn him into his own school. Hmm. I have no idea how all the parties involved felt about that in any way. <laughs> no inside information. That's just like, that's just public record. <laughs> I'm just putting a little light on the hat. Ah, oh, doesn't the hat look lit now? Yeah. So nice. It does look so nice. I'm going to maybe put a little hot spot right there. Let's see how I feel about the hot spots. Yeah, I like the hot spots. It's a hot spot, man. That was fun. Yeah. Super duper duper fun. I'm going to go ahead and take my green and a little bit of my burnt sienna and maybe a little bit of my blue. I'm trying to make a very dark chromatic black, right? So no, it's in no way black. I use no black pigment in it, but I'm making a value that's very deep so that it has a nice contrast. I could use black here, um, but the issue with using a black is that it can, uh, you know, over pull the eyes. And I like to use it for pops of things like that where black pigment in nature is super rare. Mm. Just so y'all know, it's not a common thing. Not a lot of natural black out there. <laughs> Just, it exists, it's just not how shadows are made. Right, yeah. And listen, the thing to remember in art is that one thing is not better than another thing. Like, sometimes we feel that because we see God tape a banana to a wall. And we think one thing is better than another thing. But it's not. If you get an entire country or an entire world talking about concept art, then you can't really say that that's necessarily not as good as, say, Van Gogh's Lilies. Um, even though Van Gogh's Lilies certainly would go for a lot more, uh, more money. The ir irises, sorry, irises. Um, you know, the thing is, is that it's just, it has purpose. It has purpose in your life. Techniques have purpose in your life. Style has purpose in your life. Realism is not better than Impressionism. It's well, different. Patty has put a big old patron vote that this is the most beautiful painting. So thank you, Patty. Really? Again. This is the this is she, the most beautiful. She's she's just being a beautifully supportive patron out here, and I have to say thank you. Is it you bubble so time? Much. Oh, it's definitely like we should be putting extra bubbles on all the time. I'm gonna put some bubbles on for everybody who's being supportive. Thank you for getting this out there. I'm gonna get my little dark value down, which you can see the glazing of that is just luminous now, and even though it's chromatically black to our eye, it looks black when you're up on the canvas. That depth of green. That's going to just give us joy, 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 mm. joy, joy, joy. Bubble time. Bubble time. It's bubble time. <laughs> now, thank you, guys. Again, we could never, ever th say thank you enough for making it possible for us to do this. We really appreciate it and love <laughs> you guys for it. Hello. <laughs> I'm really loving this painting. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing these little kids and flowers. Like, this has been so much fun with little hats and stuff. I have an entire saved album of them. I'm into it so much. The little boy fishing yesterday just like summed it up for me. Yeah. Thank you. I sip my coffee and sip. take my painting in. Probably take a picture. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. Just in case. Just in case. That's a good good time to take a picture. Good time to take a picture. Good time to take a picture. Isn't, isn't it? Some type of step by step. So people can find their way through. I usually try to do these beforehand, but sometimes I don't. If you didn't see yesterday's, I just have to show this off. Oh, that's a nice. That was yesterday's painting. And if you're one of those Floridian people, you might enjoy that one quite a bit. See, little boy. Mm -hmm. That's just gorgeous. I love that one. So if you're wondering, can she get there? Yes, I can get there. Just slowly. <laughs> and with purpose. <laughs> just. Mm. All right, I'm going to take a little of my had yellow into my had green. And I am going to keep it dark, but as I go up, I might um, be more in this range because, yes, it's darker, but it's also more in the light. So the deep depth of it, the deep, deep dark is down low. Notice I'm mm. not being particularly careful or neat and tidy except around where I've painted her. And our 
our patrons are being exceptionally generous here today. Did we just get generous again? Ge- yes. I'm going to have to just blow bubbles, man. You're just going to have to. Like, I'm going to paint bubbles now. This paint, is what it is. You're going you're gonna to be painting it's in the It's the paint bubble. and bubbles challenge. It, these, these, these are Joe's bubbles. Joey? This, Joe. Joe? Yeah, Joe, Joe Maisky. Joe Maisky. Thank you. So thank you, Joe. We have to thank you, say Joe. thank you for some bubbles and for the support. And dude, he, he, just in general, thanks. He's been awesome. He's been hanging around for a while. You know, always He's making fun. He's a main member of just the art community on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Good soul. Good person. Good person out there on the YouTubes. And we need those because YouTube can get crazy. Oh, look at that depth. You see the bubbles, Joe? These bubbles are for you, man. For you, man. Ah! Yes! Okay, I'm so weird. I acknowledge it. I understand that that's true. That's, Weirdness. That's why they're here. Is is me. I, I know it's, but I know I'm weird. I know it. I'm going to dry this, though. You mean so you that took all that start... time just talking and you could have been, could have been drying. That's what you could have been doing. But see, and you know what? The funny thing is, is that she is not the only person who has control over those bubbles, you know, because you watch. She thinks she's all being cute there. Bubbler. <laughs> she's screaming Tom Cruise. <laughs> I think she's trying to make one of those. Uh, who is that? That movie where he did the, he was in the bartender. I, you know. There was there were so many movies that he did that had very similar plots, but one of them involved jets, and that was the only one that I particularly was. You know. Tom Cruise. <laughs> you know, he did a bunch of movies, but the only only one that I can remember particularly is the one with the jets in it. Top Gun. Yeah. I feel the need, the need for speed. Team Ice, man. Um, <laughs> like, right? Right, ladies? <laughs> Chris was cute and all, but Team Ice, man. Mm, that, that was weird, the name of the movie. didn't it? He, he was like, my lawyers are like, what happened to Iceman? <laughs> Iceman <laughs> found the same donut store as me. <laughs> <laughs> he became later in life Thor. <laughs> later in life, man. <laughs> Oh, it's so crazy. It's so great. Like when you go back and you like look at Julian Sands a while ago. All right. And then you're looking at pictures of yourself a while ago and you're like, what is going on? The time. Time, time, time. What's become of me? <laughs> you know what's great? I sing so badly. I have never one time, not once, been getting a content strike from a singing. Because... It knows it you knows. are not close enough for anyone to care. It does. The judge would be like, nope, that is definitely not the song you were trying to sing. I'm going to take just my phthalo blue and a smidge of white. Phthalo green and a smidge of white. And I'm going to make my down uh, low leaves. And you can see I'm just using the number eight cat's tongue to sort of just pull a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> pull a leaf. It's like a maneuver. I'm going to pull a leaf maneuver. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm going to pull a leaf maneuver. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A leaf maneuver. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Explain this to your partner. A leaf maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> ah, time, time, time. Someone left you on the air with a little too much coffee. There's never. Ever, ever too much coffee. Them's is fighting words, sir. Fighting words. Do a leaf maneuver. Mm. And these are just little implied little textures. You're just building up the the sense of space there a bit so that, um, you know, you can uh, put out both titanium white and zinc white. And the idea is so that you can kind of fill these little fellows up. We've got lots of flowers to put over them, but we want this sense of deep leaf. Deep leaf. Not deep throat, deep leaf. Actually, sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not trying to spin up a political conversation. Please don't. Let's stay sane. 
you know, we don't do politics here on the <sighs> show. And mostly because it doesn't have anything to do with the color of phthalo blue. Like, at all. Right. So at all. In, as soon as we have a lobbyist for some paint stuff. Oh, my God. That'll just ruin art. Yeah. Don't do it. If you're, if you're a lobbyist, yeah. leave, like, don't see us. We are not the droids you are looking for. Notwithstanding all of the stuff that's happening in Australia, you guys got a legit thing going on there. We're not talking about that. But <laughs> it's a thing. They got well, yeah. On, but, but not here. Not here. Because we do painting here. And that's, it's not that we're not saying everybody has something to talk about. But it can stress you out. And that's I am it. saying that now. I'm saying that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing is being said that's worth anybody's mental space or time. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So we just. I'm okay. Yeah, we just. That's it. That's, that's all we, we got to say about that. Got to leave that alone. We got to leave it alone. I'm going to take a little of my magenta. Quinn magenta and my magenta medium, and I'm gonna make some of these very deep. How deep are they? So deep. Deep purple. Deep. 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 You could almost say it's like smoke on the water. <laughs> the one, the one you want. I just realized I want to watch Tank Girl right now. But I am teaching a painting, so this is what I'm doing. Hmm. So you what know, you saw me do here is these weird little shapes, and John can kind of zoom in on them, and they're just these little round puffed of shapes. Puffed as, puffed as, puffed as. Of barely visible, clearly. Oh, they're, they're visible over here. You just, you're in a studio full of lights with glare, looking at a tiny monitor from far away. From far away. And... Far, you know, far from here. You say Tank Girl. I always wonder. I, I, we haven't gone back and watched that one. Mm -hmm. So you have to wonder, do kangaroos and iced tea stand the test of time? They do. Iced tea stands the test of time. Well, and he's been in a very long committed relationship with Coco. And I commend the two of them. I'm ch and look, I'm not I saying. I commend Coco for just standing up. His performance may hold up, but it's the whole whole thing the, is the, good. The enchilada. The whole was, enchilada is good. Part, the comic was good. The movie was good. It's all good. But has it stood up the Don't test of time? Don't go lose your mind now. I'm, We've I, been married a long time. It's not time for you to lose your mind by suggesting anything is un, like not perfect about Tank Girl. Let's add some cad yellow to our phthalo green before it gets crazy. Just saying. A new who, a new hope stood I the do, test sweetheart. of time. Thank you. You have a psychic, wonderful son instinct about things. I'm now adding a slightly lighter value of the phthalo green. You guys see it? I do. And so we're just building up these levels and layers. Ogres are like layers. Phthalos like layers. Hydrangeas have layers. And it's really just about... Turn this aside so that my bushes... <laughs> Sorry! I crack myself up, and not always for the right reasons. Mm. I'm the other. I'm the mother. Other mothers wander away from. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> is together. she coming? Oh, she's so weird. She's got like pink hair. How do I tell my kid they can't have pink hair? You know, it's there's some. It's it's funny because there are some moms who are like. Whew, they just breathe in and relieve as they sit down and they're like, okay, so you're not going to judge my hair. Thank you. I'm going to sit over here yeah. by you. And <laughs> <laughs> clinging to me like a life raft. <laughs> you, it's funny because we can spot our own, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think my favorite memory is when we saw Terry at that meetup. Yep. And so we're all sitting there. We're at a meetup at Disney, uh, downtown Disney, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a free meetup. And I think it's like one of the first, second one we ever did. Yep. And um, so we're like, oh, it's cool. And we've got a, a wonderful group of gals there. And we're all talking and laughing. And oh, thank you. Terry, thank then, you. <laughs> and, uh, then there's Terry. She's got to be 5'11". Yeah, and she's like standing across. And she's sort of looking around. And we all like, just we're, a like little... we're like, uh, what is it, meerkats. We're like. 
and it was funny because she she was looking around just a little like I wonder where everybody is at and am I in the right place and everyone could just cue into she's and we one went, of ours. You. <laughs> we literally did. We're like you. You're one of us. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a fun day. Uh, we're gonna have a blast at the retreat. Mm. We are. I'm looking forward to it. So many outdoor paintings to do. It'll just be this, like, 12 hours a day. <laughs> but with me. And I'll tell you what, it's so crazy when uh, people paint with me in person because they're very excited. Nobody's ever, like, not excited to do it. They're always super excited. But they get there, and they're, like, they're so excited until that exact moment, and they realize, oh, my gosh, she's not in the TV. She's going to walk over here and look at my painting. <laughs> what? I did not think this plan out. <laughs> I just got in the car and said, I'm going to go see the Sherpa. And that seemed like a really good idea. Now I'm rethinking all my life choices that brought me to this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Terry's six foot straight up. Is she six foot straight up? Yeah. I've just added a little bit of That's crazy. Um, white to my phthalo green. And I'm going to kind of like weave this into my bright green leaves. Yeah. If you have a hydrangea hued hair, we can pretty much spot you as one of our own from a mile away yes i think there's a lot of husbands that are mad at me too because like i think there's husbands that love me and partners that love me and then partners who are like i used to have a spouse and now they've got crazy colored hair and start talking about like if i were to paint the sky i would use quinacridone magenta <laughs> i'm not gonna stop though so Best butter, buckle up, buttercup. <laughs> this train's leaving the station. This train's leaving the station. And we are painting hydrangeas today. I don't have an album for really good reasons. Hey. <laughs> I should uh, do an album like um, William Shatner did an album, <laughs> Spoken Poetry. <laughs> The heart sherp. <laughs> you know what? We'll talk about that after the show because that'd be funny. <laughs> Just things I don't need to be doing with my time, but probably will do. I'm going to add a lot more uh, yellow, and I'm adding my tinting white to this, and I'm making a pretty bright color. And now we're going to create some focal leaves. A blister in the sun. As performed by the art Sherpa in spoken word. Let me go run like a blister in the sun. Let me go run. Big <laughs> hands, I know you're the one. <laughs> See, I knew. I've been married a little while. <laughs> Let me go run. <laughs> when we were first together, he was like, Why do you like this song so much? It's not a happy song. <laughs> You need to start listening to lyrics more. <laughs> I was like, this is a little darker than I would have expected. But, you know, it's you, there's a lot of songs that are great. I mean, like, <laughs> Blues Travelers, The Hook. <laughs> like, I did not even get into those at all. I'm like, Lords of Acid. <laughs> For those of you who are have listened to the lyrics of that song, yes, we all. So, but there's a bunch of those songs. I was, like, up last night with a honey, like, listening to, like, New Wave. <laughs> Watching them old music videos. And like, you know, Cinnamon and I love the song Breakfast at Tiffany's. Really. It's our date song. It's such a crazy date song to have, though. Right. If you listen to the lyrics, it's like, whoa, this is kind of not so. 500 Miles by the Reclaimers is also a nice song. Yeah. But, you know. but maybe Breakfast at Tiffany's. But, however, that is a true song to our relationship. <laughs> It fits, so I'm going with it. I'm taking a picture of this. Yo. All right. This is so pretty. This is like one of my favorites that I have done. It really is. It's amazing. And I love how like we're now down to that two-thirds of the way done where it's all about to happen real fast. And could you give do me a favor? Hmm. We didn't Patty gave us another another little love for our for our heat talk public service announcement which I didn't actually give because I only gave one public service announcement at the beginning of this, but she did it in anticipation that I was going to do it. So, you know, thank you. 
for what I never did do. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, you got a weird Sherpa dance. <laughs> Whoa! Or wait, get real goth. Be like, whoa. Is that what we do today? I don't know. Depends on what the music plays. That's called the hydrangea. <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's real funny. And what stuff is better? I wish I was like. What are you doing? <laughs> so fine. I'm going to sip my coffee. Okay. <sighs> Good play. I can't wait to see these. Okay, It'll be wait. like. Girls in hydrangeas, gnomes. Girls in hydrangeas, gnomes. <laughs> It'll be fantastic. Someone should put some gnomes in the hydrangeas. Ooh. See, Cinnamon's going to try out be a tricky. And she's going to, like, smack a light. And, like, there'll be glass shattering. There's no glass. It's all plastic. But, you know, I should, I should make some. That would be fun. Shh. But it wouldn't actually be fun. Cause it would hurt. But we won't do that. Because it's plastic, and I thought about that already. So anyway, as I think of something funny and then have OSHA fear thoughts. <laughs> ah, no! Um, wow, I've been left alone too long. You did? What happened? Well, I was thinking of you throwing the uh, hairdryer into the lighting fixture above you and then the glass falling down on you, but I realized Gosh, there's no glass. that would be really embarrassing, would that not? But there's no glass, and it's all plastic, and it's all <laughs> safe, and I was just like, well, then I was having the panic attack that like, <laughs> you'd actually do something that would cause, but I was like, I actually made sure you're okay over there. There's... I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine fluid in my purple. You left me alone too long. <laughs> I did, and maybe even a little bit of my thalabu. And I'm going to make some hydrangea puffs. Y'all would be crazy. These are the hydro puffs, huh? I want this hydrangea bush so bad. Soon. Soon. Mm. Soon, soon, soon. Soon, soon, soon. Soon, soon, soon. This is a very big cluster puff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mature. Don't you love my maturity, darling? Yeah, I am mature. A little more thalo blue into the mix. As Mr. Ernie would say, what kind of cluster puff is this? This is the ultimate cluster puff. <sighs> Pay attention to your cluster puffs. You know, auto... The, the, the you know, autocorrect I'm, is going to sure get me demonetized. That does get me regularly demonetized. Uh, closed captioning, because I enable, anytime there's a closed captioning feature on YouTube, I enable it. Because I think accessibility is a big deal. And obviously, I cannot closed caption by hand, hour, two hour, three hour videos. So they're open for community captioning. Um, however, the system is getting better and better at doing it. It does, however, think I'm a pervy crazy freak. Just so. <laughs> It's just... <laughs> Based on screenshots it, people have sent me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, that's a lot to answer for that I've got to deal with. Oh, Diana would like to know, can I use Q-tips for those hydrange puffs? Yes. They would perfectly q -tipable. Perfectly wonderful. Yep. They will like you for it, too. Mm -hmm. I'm just being... Crazy for feeling so lonely. All right, boom, boom, boom. Just making puffs. Cluster puffs. When your Saturday's a complete cluster puff. <laughs> it's full of it's a it's you've been stuck in a hydrangea I'm bush. I'm not I'm not gonna be able to. Ch I'm just like it's about it now. Okay, it's, guys, it's just this is happening, right. and I'm I'm happening, and it's all going on. I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone in my mid-range magenta. And the top ones, definitely. Cinnamon has the, hu the humor of a 14-year-old girl. Boy. 
Spider and I laugh at the same stuff. <laughs> and the girls look at us like, that's not as funny as y'all think. <laughs> You're watching Scissor 7. And I like, we just think the chicken who carries the guy by his mm-mm, is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> When it becomes beautiful, handsome leg chicken, it's so exciting. I'm okay. I'm weird, but I'm okay. Indeed. Y'all know which member of Breakfast Club I am. You guys don't even need to be told. For sure it isn't Molly, is it? <laughs> we all wanted to be Molly. Mm. Who still looks amazing. You know. I had to do a gut check. I don't know that I ever wanted to be Molly. No? No. Nope, I'm not pretty sure. one in her hand. That's not, that's not been a thing. She's holding one of these, right? She's got herself a hold of one of those. Thus, the not having to do her hand, mm. which was fantastic. Add just a little bit to these down here. Just so they have some tonality. I am loving this painting, you guys. Is anyone still here? Or is oh, everyone yes. like wandering away? Oh, my gosh, away? yes. Yeah. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a big celebration that, uh, yes, there are many Mollies in the room. Oh, there are a lot of Mollies? Yes. I wish I was a Molly. I wish I was. I'm probably more of a dinky. Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. Everybody gets a piece of carpet. <laughs> Still painting little cluster balls. <laughs> <laughs> I like I super challenge you if your partner comes in, what you doing? I am in the middle of a big cluster ball. Mm, I'm I'm in the middle of a cluster puff. Cluster Don't. puff. Don't get close. <laughs> There's so many cluster puffs going on. Situation normal, all puffed up. Ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> John can spoof songs really well. I, I like, cannot. John's a regular weird owl. Mm. <sighs> I like music sometimes. He likes music a lot, all the time. I just don't even. He likes music a lot, all the time. That's a big cluster puff. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to think about uh, how the piece is balanced. Right, because we're going to have a big bunch of cluster puffs here and then some across like here. So I'm just trying to keep everything sort of balanced. If I get into it and I'm like, oh, man, that needs to be blue, then I'm going to go in and be like, oh, this might need to be more blue. You just get right in it, see? The cool cluster puffs can still happen. There we go. I just... You know, want to keep everything sort of interesting. That looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty okay. Pretty all right. I've got a bunch of big ones to do here once I get these painted in. So basically, it's a real similar thing. I'm going to take this and the little light violet blue, blue violet. And I'm going to hit the next little puff up. Just touch. Oh, this is a number eight cat's tongue. And I'm going to puff the top of the puff. I'm just tapping little kind of shapes in because these petals, they're like very, oh gosh, they're just gorgeous. I love hydrangeas. They're like one of my very, very, very favorite flowers. Mm. Really wanted to paint them for a while. Oh, bad. I do how bad. Look at that. They really came out nice. 
I'm loving this painting. This is exactly where I hoped it would be. It's a lot, guys. I know. I know we're at it for a minute, but. It's actually not bad. Really? Yeah, it's an hour and 50 right now. No way! Yeah, I don't think you're going to be. This is really coming together pretty fast. Like, uh, like just over two hours, I think. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Well, and here's the important thing. Like, sometimes I look at it like I'll go longer because there's a painting you're hoping to do. Right? And I'm trying to make sure that you are not, you know, not getting the painting that you're hoping to get. I'm very much enjoying doing this. Yeah. Yes. So much. So much. A little bit darker down here. You can see. Look at that. Rinse out. <laughs> I'm going to get a little of my zinc and some of my Halo blue. I'm going to come on the back side and also add some of that. See how we're doing? Just creating these little bits of. <gasps> What's so pretty? What's so pretty? Pretty, 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 pretty. Pretty, 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 yeah, pretty, 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 yeah, so, so pretty. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and green together, and I'm going to get some of my titanium white into that. I'm going to add some of that turquoise. Isn't that gorgeous? Just pops, doesn't it? Mm. Just makes this like, what? <gasps> so gorgeous. And I'm like, I know. That's why I shared it with you. Because I didn't want you to miss out. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot to do on these forward puffs, but we don't mind because we're painting flowers. I am not low key. I'm just taking a picture. Oh no, that's okay. I was just over here, just catching up on uh, some chat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What's happening in the chat world? Oh, they were just sort of asking. Actually, there's uh, some asking about some patron stuff here. Ooh, so um, thank you for asking about patron stuff. When you donate through YouTube, uh, YouTube and the platform, uh, you know, whether it be like anything like Patreon or anything like that, they always do take a percentage and. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we've produced our own patronage page on our website. So Grab if you just if you go out it. there to the com forward slash patron, you'll find uh, that's one of the areas where you can support us directly. Yeah, and our monthly groove is pretty cool. Yeah, it's been pretty cool our stuff. monthly patronage is pretty cool. Just adding a little pink to some of the... It feels like there's a combo in some of the little puff balls where they're kind of both. I don't know if you've noticed it, where they have kind of both little jams in there. Mm. And some of their, even though they're like kind of purple, they've got some of the pink jam. And I don't want to not include that if it's there. Super fun stuff. Now I'm going to get into my very wonderful light blue violet. I'm going to very carefully touch out 
the highlights on what is the purple puff ball. So using my number key cat's tongue, just a tip. Mm -hmm. Just the toe of the brush. And kind of define these highlights at the top of them, the beginnings of it. Aren't they wonderful? Yeah. This makes me super happy to do. And when you touch the brush like this, you're just kind of implying the different petals. It is super wonderful. You know, everyone who's hanging in today, I really appreciate it. I hope this lesson is helpful and makes you feel like, oh, I can totally do that. Oh, yeah. This is beautiful. Everybody's just super loving this. The chat's been hopping today. And when you're up close on it, it's hot. It's a hot mess, right? But when you get back, it's just gorgeous. Painting is like that. Like our lives. From a distance, they look amazing. But up close, sometimes they feel like a hot mess. But we forget that other people are looking in and all they see is the big brush strokes. Mm -hmm. They may not catch all of our crazy little messy paint dollops. Art and life are very similar. So not everything on these like in shadow puff balls, just a little bit, just to say, oh, it caught a little bit of light. It caught a little bit of light. It did. It caught a little bit of light. Then I'm going to get into my white here and really lighten it. If I need to, some titanium white. Just really, I'm trying to get a very light value. Now, if you used Q-tips to do this, you'd still want to highlight with the brush? Um, you could. You could actually use the Q-tips to do quick work of stuff. Just use a lighter color. Yeah. And then come back with a brush to do detail work. That wouldn't be incorrect, right? Yep. Now, do you uh, varnish any of these? I can. You know, I've got a couple times a year that I do varnishing. Varnishing can help with the storage. Varnishing is for protection and unification, right? But acrylic paint is fairly resilient. So what I mean by that is it's the, it's hard to damage the paintings. Like if like if you had what Star Hurley had, which is, you know, her husband uh, uh, dressed a deer next to a painting and got blood all over it, that would have been a good time to have varnish on the painting to improve cleaning. But short of that crazy thing happening to you <laughs> where your kid's touching with peanut butter hands or really getting into the artwork, most of the time acrylic paintings are very fine. But sometimes they're some of them is shiny and some of them is matte, and that may not appeal to you. And that is why you might say um varnish it just unify that finish mm. you guys kind of seeing the shape of these puff balls now mm -hmm. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Happy little painting. Having a happy little moment. I like it. I do too. Very happy with that. And we're hitting the home stretch. We've got to highlight our pink puff balls and then make our big focal front puff balls. And maybe add some leaf highlights because the green is a little bit one toned. Mm. As sometimes happens. I'm going to add a little of the yellow to my magenta. 
a little more magenta. <laughs> so that there, and I'm gonna start mixing through the magentas, trying to create these uh, wonderful, wonderful little tonalities that we have there. Yeah. That was alizarin crimson, not the color I was looking for. Wow, don't use that color. <laughs> I'll put this over here. I don't know if you've ever done that. You're like, Argh! and you're like, what do I do? Do I gotta like, you know, save that or what? There's some titanium white. Super irritating. I know. I'm sorry. It's not irritating at all. There we go. A little bit of that and a little bit of this. Quite bright, quite lovely. Let's start to work our puffs. A little bit lighter than that. There we go. I like the paint to be kind of thick. Just putting a little extra petals on the shape of the puff. Starting to shape up my puffs, yo. Yeah. Puffs need shape, man. Puffs need form and oh I'm hot. Just having a personal summer up in here. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. Not Frankie goes to Hollywood hot either. Just the kind where I'm actually just physically hot. <laughs> <gasps> Just trying to make sure that these have a lot of depth and dimension. Adding a little bit of that white and yellow to it creates this great peach. I kind of keep the highlights of the puff flowers in the same sort of place. Kind of implying where the sun is coming from. Aren't those great? They're just so vibrant. Like it, rinse it out. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that just magenta and some white here. So this helps me really have a lot going on on my puff balls. So much color and so much wonder and after all you're my wonder be some sort of puff balls along there. Insert now. <laughs> mm. Doing really well. Now the pink ones especially uh, around the top have quite a lot of highlight in them. So I'm going to take this white, which has just a bit of the pink into it, and really load up. I'm good. Well, yeah, buddy. Thank you. You're so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the attentive hand. <laughs> He's so good. And just like his dad. <laughs> A 
I'm just really trying to look at the reference to say where were the where did these shapes have the most highlight and how was it laid across the flower and you can see that it's I pass off my coffee to you a little bit, buddy. Sorry, yes. <laughs> it just gets cold out here. I get hot, coffee gets cold. I don't know what's going on. It's one of those things. Oh my gosh, you guys are so amazing to be here. I know this is kind of a longer lesson. Oh no, lesson, they're loving this. This is awesome. But you know, lots of puffballs to paint. Sometimes it just takes a minute to paint some puffballs. I want you guys to get the best results. You can see I'm just picking that highest value. When you try to paint every single petal on the hydrangea, you will be adding about 200 hours to your paint time. <laughs> and you have to decide if that look is what you're going for, right? Like I don't ever try to hide the fact that I painted something. Um, and that's a lot of times what realism does is it kind of hides the medium that you used and you know, some of the stuff that you have going on. So you're just trying to show the world what's in your heart. Oh, I got a little crazy with the white there. Did you see that? Mm. And I'm going to keep these bright highlights up top because those are the ones that are more in a, in a, a light. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you, sir. You are my favorite. Mm, this has turned out pretty good. <laughs> are, you at a, are you at a picture place? I'm at a picture place. You could, you could step back, take a picture. Yeah. Have a sip. Turned out oh, good. that looks good. It really does. It's a very sweet painting. It is almost 3D. There you are. No matter where you go, there you are. Stuff we learned from Buckaroo Banzai. Mm -hmm. The great teacher. I'm going to take a little bit of this green over to my yellow and I'm going to make this very bright green. Grab some white into it. And I'm going to also put in these pops of super light leaves. They're not everywhere. But they're an important part of the piece looking. Like that perhaps because the leaves will be impacted by the bright light as well. And when you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you have a nice dispersant. Of colors that you're trying to get through. I can also use this to help me fill in any spots that I have so I can grab that and you can put some leaves over the hydrangea balls that you've got, your puff balls, making sure that that wonderful part of the composition is just And this kind of creates that sense of light right there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And the leaves are brighter up top. Just the white and the yellow. Lighter, lighter. Get those values. Exaggerate them. Little leaves catching light. Wonderful. So Aria. Hi Aria. Ar Ar Aria. She was asking, 
if uh, if I sign up on the website, mm -hmm. is it free? And what does it do? Yeah, okay, just signing to the website is free. Mm -hmm. um, if you opt into our newsletter, once a month we send you a newsletter, unless there's an event you might be about, I don't at this moment saw any advertising into my newsletter. So it's just news for me to you about stuff that's happening. Um, and we, we try to do that once a month. So sometimes that'll be like your best way to find out what's going on about big programs like the Bigger Quest or Acrylic April or events or things. The other thing that you get is you get to be able to upload a whole bunch of artwork. You can share it. You can like other people's stuff. Um, it's easier to get access to things. Um, and as we add more features, like I think there's a game on there, there's stuff on there to do. Um, and that's just that you don't have to be a patron to get to the traceables, to any of the resources, to work the website or to upload the images or have a little gallery, any of that. And I think we have chat on there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there. And I'm going to say thank you to for Jennifer, who's been a really generous supporter of Spider, Mr. Uh, Studio Is Assistant. Is she? Yes. So thank you very much out there. Oh, thank you. I will blow some bubbles for you. Yeah. It's my baby's birthday coming up. He's getting to be such a big man. He is. Give everybody a little intro song. <gasps> <laughs> so thank you guys. We always do a support. Love, love, love the support. It's, you know, just it's our pleasure to be able to come out here and do this. So thank you. Thank you. It truly is. Truly, truly, truly is our pleasure to be able to do any of this. We're very lucky. Yeah. And we know it. So she's got this wonderful little bit of a vine that comes down there, doesn't she? It's this fabulous little light vine. It has some little leaves on it. They're more focal. And then there's a puff ball there. We've got some other little little bits of sort of more focal mm. plants. And so I'm gonna just come here and there'll be a lot more green leaf here, but it's nice just to do some of those little focus ones on the stems. Oh yeah. Just making sure those little leaf textures are worked out in front of her dress. The layering of what's happening with her to me is a big, big deal. And I'm going to, in this particular case, I'm going to take just my phthalo blue. Make a very big and noticeable puff ball. I'm now also going to put a close to her puff ball. Maybe that's phthalo blue and purple because it's kind of here in the dark a bit more and I might add some of this to the lower side of that puffball as you do. I want some of that to come over her dress. I'm going to take a little of my white paint and catch this right here and we've got some big puffs over here. We're going to make much more focal. These are closer to us. These are foreground, aren't they? Mm. So they'll be bigger. And then I'm going to get some of my magenta. White if I need it. Magenta. And I'm going to do that big puff. A little bit of the, what? So this really helps put her in the bushes, if you're noticing, having this foreground. You're using a cat's tongue, right? I'm still using my cat's tongue number eight. Okay. Just making sure.
that we've got what we need. Kind of a little bit of a run across the front edge. And take a little bit of those magentas and my pink and I'm going to come here and make sure that this big boy looks amazing. Make sure that there's a bunch of low, amazing looking little pops there. Just enjoy, you know? Now they're in front of the dress. They're doing all those things they need to be a doing. Mm -hmm. And they have things that they need to do and we're doing them. We'll put some phthalo blue sort of over here by the pink. And I've got the purple and it's pretty nice. Take a little bit of my white and my blue. Sometimes I like to get some purple into it. We're going to just define these even a little bit more. See how we're defining them? Now, I'm going to take some purple and I'm going to come on the underside of my little puff ball here. And I might even grab some of my magenta. And you'll notice I'm mixing right on the canvas, putting in that color. Yep. That's just creating just a little more detail into that one. Leaving these down here more in the dark, I'm going to be doing that with as well. I'm going to take a little bit of my magenta here and I might grab some of my yellow. If I need more white in a minute, I'll get it. Just layering up the lighter and lighter values, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure that these have a little puff shape. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put out a little more white. 
A little more of my magenta. A little more of my, I've got plenty of that. I just need more white, I think. There it is. You can see it's like very loosely mixed. We're just building it up. I hear John typing away. Making notes. What's the excited notes? Excitedly notes. Huh? Making excited notes. Excited notes? Excited notes. Oh, that's wonderful. Stuff for later. Stuff for later. Let me grab some just pure pink magenta and put the right here on this flower before I hit it with the white. And let's go ahead and get some of this kind of purple blue onto this puffball. That right there. If I need to grab some blue there and come on the underside of this one, I can really easily make a second one. Some white, mm -hmm. just a smidge of my phthalo blue. Come here and see how that's nice, white, bright. I really do. Right by her. There we go. She looks great there. Really does. A little nice puff ball on her butt. Hmm. Where hmm? are you going? Oh, here. Man, you're just like always just right off the camera. So I get a little freaked out like, where are you? And you're just, it's at the end of the painting where you're jumping around a lot. I, I got to jump around going. at the end of the painting. You're like, need some here. Need some here. Over here. Over here. Here. I'm going to take a little of my yellow and quite a lot of my white. Don't mind if a little pink gets in it. This is my lightest puffball color. I'm just putting that right on top there. Pretty thick. Pretty impasto. For up close, see how it's just gotten thicker and mm -hmm. has a little more texture to it? That's what's happening. I'm going to go across here with these. Just a bit of a highlight down there so that those look like they've caught some sun. Just touching the brush and it just pulls a little paint back. That's really fun to do. This yeah. is painterly. 
impressionistic. Quite emotional. Make sure that the puffball she's got. All right, guys, guess what? Mm. Couple more leaves and we done. This is so it's going so quick. Is it going quick? Yeah. I'm glad that your perception is that it's going quick. <laughs> it's a good perception. So a bit brighter in the yellow and the white on the forward facing leaves, if you're noticing. Uh huh. Just so that those feel that they've also caught a bit more light around her. Yep. Yeah. Do one there, two there. Not too much past here. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. I think she's just perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Guess what's left? Signing! Oh. If I can find the signature brush. There it is. <laughs> and I'm going to put out some fluid white paint just to make it a little easier for myself. I'm just going to sign in white here in the corner. I might actually do one last touch. I think you guys would be Tickled to see before I sign. Okay. What are you doing up there? You guys have any questions? You might want to get them in now. While I'm oh, doing major. this I'm little. Trying, I, I'm trying to zoom in to see what you're doing, so it's hard for me to. Oh, no, no, I'm just letting them know because there's a delay. Okay, let me see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch some of her details with this pure white paint on a detail brush. Creating a bit of a delicate. Hard edge lining where the light has caught her. A bit. Everyone's loving how this is turning out. Even Twix back there sneezing. Twix is always a fan. <laughs> I'm going to come here with this white lining around a few of these hydrangeas. Then I'm going to sign because this will be so pretty. It's super mm. worth doing. Not amazing. It just creates a little delicate, a delicate thought. They were surprised that you didn't put little tufts of hair coming out from underneath the hat. Oh, you know what, guys? Thank you. I just got so into my painting, I forgot her hair. Mm. Is she supposed to have hair? <laughs> She's supposed to have hair. Oh, well, there you go. Thank you. I'm glad I didn't sign yet. Mm. I have to thank Diana about that. Thank you, Diane. Like Those little halos are like the sauce of awesome. You can even very carefully come in on each hydrangea and almost like imply a little bit of lighting that's hit the puff. Now, you're right. Hair. Wonderful thing to do. Let's start with a little of our burnt sienna. Maybe a smidge of our black to deepen it. I'm thinning this with water, as you can see. I make sure my hand isn't carrying anything. A little more black there. Thank you for catching this. 
Madeline. She put up an awesome pair of stickers saying, number one fan. So that's Thank awesome. You. You're going to have to give her some bubbles before you go tonight. I need nothing, sir. Thank you. <laughs> bubbles. Are doing hair. Thank you for the stickers and the pears. And thank you for reminding me that I got to paint the hairs. So These you, things guys. all matter. You know me. I get right off and like, oh, wait, that unicorn had a horn, right? <laughs> <sighs> but we thank you guys. We always thank you for being our patrons. We love it. We appreciate it. And it makes everything we do possible. Thank you so much. This thank is so, so like my favorite painting right now. Yeah. It's really turned out nice. It really has. Just a little bit of hair is poking out. Well, and she has such nice little hair, and there's some fun stuff that we can do with it. I just got to kind of get it started. I might do some with my number four round and then finish it out with my detail, as you do. Mm. I just wanted to get some nice dark values in there. Let's thin this with a little bit of water. So you see me putting a drop. You can thin acrylic paint with about 30% water if you're using a pro brand and about 15 if you're using a student. Now I'm going to exaggerate her hair a bit because hair is pretty. Yeah, starting to see it coming out, right? Mm. Yay. You do want the dark value right here at the hat. Because the hat would shade the hair, and even blonde hair would have some deep shading. I'm going to grab some of my yellow ochre. I may put some of that brown and black mix into it, and I'll add some white. Now, if you want to color, if you want other colored hairs, we have a great set of videos on our website. Just go to theartsherpa.com, click on videos, and mm -hmm. type in hair. Lots of it out there. If you don't find the hair you like, you can type in fur. Maybe get creative. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true though. <laughs> I'm laughing, but he's what he's telling you is completely true. <laughs> There's a few videos out there for you. I'm just doing a lot of S curves and piecing out. I don't paint every individual hair, but it is important to paint the kind of body and shape of the hair. I guess it doesn't have any uh, crazy uh, overt lines. So I'm going to dry it real quick so I can layer well. Okay. Doo, doo, doo. Did it say no? Uh, what happened? Hmm. Don't know. <laughs> I'm not it gonna says, dry it. It says no today. It says well, no. It was said earlier. It said yes, so but it got unplugged, not and now. now it's saying no. It, it must have been unplugged by a helpful person. Yes, I would accident. say helpful people. <laughs> so I'm gonna work it out. I'll do it all the prime. I'm taking a little bit of my cad yellow and my yellow ochre. And I'll mix these two together. I'm going to catch some highlights. Just a little bit. Oh, perfect. Sorry about that. She kicked the uh, uh, breaker. You know, the little um, push button breakers that are on the end of the uh, hair dryers. She just. Um, with her toe, she hit the reset button on one of those. I so, did? Yep, yeah, that's what it was. On oh, the floor. okay. I don't know what I did, but I did. I'm adding a little bit of white to my yellow ochre cad yellow mix. That's why I was able to make it go. You never know how you do stuff. You shouldn't tell me the secrets because I think you're so, like, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Where I know the sunlight can hit, I'm going to hit this, and then I'm also going to strengthen these lighter values at the ends. 
And what you're seeing me do is really pay attention to those S curves, especially in the hair. You can always go back and exaggerate um, values and things. So you can be like, oh, this is like, maybe that's. And as you can see, that kind of gives it highlights and the lights. Uh huh. Now I can get back into my um, little detail brush. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to get my yellow into my white here and I'm going to piece some very delicate little hair pieces from it you can kind of see I did a little curl there outside of that hair as it's closer into the light should be lighter yeah you should see it as much lighter and kind of reflecting that light that's what we do we just catch little bits of highlights and sunlight into hair And that's how you get it where it looks like it's like the light is caught in the ends of the hair. Mm. Almost becomes, I don't know, like translucent. Thank you for not letting me forget that because she's so much cuter for having hair. Oh, yeah. So there's the hair. <laughs> Sorry about the whole hair. Guys, this was a great day. Thank you so much. This really turned out awesome. Really did. Here, I'm going to step back and let everybody see it for a second. Mm. Take a tour of it. Look at that. It really did turn out nice. Just a beautiful little happy painting. Oh my gosh, look at her. Just She's going to look amazing fantastic. on your wall. Isn't she just like, gosh, every dream of being a little girl, right? Just right there. It's just the best feeling in the world. And, and that's what I love about painting is it does get you there. I think it's very important that um, we use art for two things. One, which is, you know, to work, mark, express the things that we have going on as human beings. But I also think it's super important um, in our lives to hang things on our walls that lift us up. They're like windows to the best possible landscapes and the best possible futures and our best hopes and wishes for ourselves. So while it's, it is great to use art to work through all kinds of stuff, those things that we put on our wall, really think about those images, the things that you look at every day and check how they impact your heart because you want them to make you feel safe and better and okay where you are today. I want you guys to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye!